Bali, Indonesia, one of the most famous islands in the entire world. Tourists have been coming here for decades, but the easing of travel restrictions in post-pandemic years has ushered in the biggest boom yet. Hello, digital nomads and influencers, and the Western businesses and prices that come with them. I'm visiting Bali to find out how the locals feel about the state of the island today, and to learn more about the local Balinese people and how they live. Bali is known as the Island of the Gods. Hinduism is the predominant religion here, and you see signs of it everywhere. And to this day, Balinese people practice daily rituals that remain unchanged after hundreds of years. Welcome to In Bali! This is one of those funny moments that happen when you travel. We had an issue with our motorbike, we lost battery. And we went to one mechanic shop and the guy tried to rip us off to restart the battery. So we drove up the street and we ended up at this house with this lovely gentleman and his wife and we're waiting for the battery to charge and they're being really friendly and welcoming us into their home. My full name is Nyoman Budiarta. I'm from Bali, Padang, by Phila. Okay. This is my mother, Chinese, from Chinese, yeah. Chinese, already... mother-in-law. already all. Nine, Nine, 95. 95. Oh. Very strong. Yeah. Very strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Subscribe, like, and comment. Yes! <laughs> Tanangsari, or daily offerings, are part of the Balinese people's spiritual practice. They usually contain flowers wrapped in a coconut leaf and are used to ward off demons, attract prosperity, and honor ancestors. The color of these flowers are not chosen randomly. They represent different gods and are placed in specific directions. So this is the outfit for going to the Hindu temple, the public temple. The Balinese outfit consists of a blouse that is typically made using lace material. The sarong has been worn by the Balinese for centuries, and a wide sash is worn around the waist. She was so lovely. I got the full traditional outfit to go to the Hindu temple. How do I look? Very traditional Balinese. <laughs> Nilu graciously takes us on a tour through the family compound. This is not a public temple. This is the temple of her family, and they all live in this community. Traditional Balinese homes are distinct in their design, featuring a collection of structures carefully arranged around a central courtyard and a sacred family shrine. So this family lives in a big complex with different houses, and the temple is kind of the center of gravity. And this is a really common way that Balinese people live. It's very communal, and it's very nice families together with religion at the center. I have papa, mother, and brother, papa, yeah, already dead, already uh, cremation. Cremated, already, cremated. Already cremation, yeah. And they're all here. Yeah. 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 So she comes from a very big family, and a lot of her family members, when they pass away, they are cremated according to the Hindu religion. And some of the ashes are scattered in the ocean, and others are left in these here, behind the little doors that you see. My papa already strong, make children. Yeah, he's making a lot of children. <laughs> and your mother, very strong too. She does have a lot of children. Life in a Balinese home is characterized by a strong sense of community, shared responsibility, and a deep respect for tradition. The extended family lives together in harmony, sharing meals, participating in ceremonies, and supporting one another. It's a beautiful way of life. Subscribe, yeah. like, and comment, Balinese people. Yes. <laughs>
This is something nobody told me about Bali. That traffic is like this. We're in Tengu, it's rush hour, and this is a little bit worse than it is most of the day, but every day is really congested. So something to just keep in mind when you come here. Crowded, noisy, polluted. If you're not good at motorcycle riding, good luck getting around town. So the traffic in Bali is so crazy all the time. <laughs> Why? What is going on there? 20 years ago, like, there's traffic, but not like nowadays. Alexander is a driver in Bali, transporting tourists to and from the airport. He was born and raised here and has witnessed firsthand the incredible amount of change that Bali has been through. In Western countries, they make a plan, they build the route, then they build the building after. In Bali, sometimes people build the house first mm. and then the street will follow. That's funny. And I assume part of it is because the roads were built before mass tourism. So when the roads mm. were built, it wasn't taking into account that, you know, a few decades later, Bali was going to explode. We're at Alexander's favorite restaurant in Denpasar. On the menu today, seafood, fish with chili sauce, Fish topped with chili, shallots, tomatoes, and spices. Fish in a sauce of coconut milk and turmeric. Clams and chili. And a fish head soup. Mm. See? Wow. And after the pandemic, there was an influx of people, right? Can you yeah. tell me a little bit about how Bali has changed just in the last few years? I I think it's not only in Bali, but most of our new generation, millennial, they also adapted. Nowadays, there's very, very less amount of uh, teenagers who love to do the gamelan or the Balinese dance, kind of like that. They went to the beach club, something like that. Uh, so the tourism is basically modernizing the local Balinese populations. How do you feel about that? I don't know how it will be in the next five years will my grandson even can see the same thing you saw nowadays when you've been in Bali. And how do you feel about you know sharing your home with so many tourists from foreign it's countries? It's okay, it's okay. In in Bali we love to share everything. This beauty, all this 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 island. But the thing is how we enjoy it, will it make a huge difference to people who live here, who, who was born here. So, yeah, let's see. <laughs> so how would you feel if tourism disappeared from Bali overnight? More or less than 80% Balinese people, they work in uh, tourism industry and everything support the industry. So when there's something happen, it give a huge impact to Balinese people. to go take a silver jewelry making class. Silver smithing has been a tradition in Bali for centuries. Nestled in the small village of Taro in northern Ubud, 
Our class is run by a Balinese family in a traditional compound. Here in the village, young people learn how to make silver at an early age and make a living teaching tourists how to make jewelry. My name is Made. I am silversmith for Ubud. <laughs> so we get to choose one of these styles and then make it. How long have you been making silver? Uh, more than 10 or uh, 15 years. 15, 15 years. years, yeah. Wow. So puts gasoline. We are guided step by step throughout the silver making process from the melting and molding to forging, binding, and decorating. I've never seen melted silver before. Check it out, my silver bars are still a little bit warm. Do yeah. a lot of people know how to make yeah. silver jewelry yeah. in Ubud? Yeah, in here, in my uh, village. Yeah. Oh, okay, so a lot of people learn it in yeah. your village yeah. and they grow up and sell jewelry or yeah. teach jewelry making classes. Yeah. That's really nice, thank yeah. you. Gotta put your back into it a little bit. Okay, now 1.7, which is the size that you need to be. Okay, so this is how you polish it. How you bring out that really shiny silver. Okay, final product. After a little toothbrush, we've got our beautiful shiny silver rings. Here we are. It's so pretty. And I think Lenza is a little more skilled than I am at it, but you know. <laughs> no, no, you just didn't work. You just didn't work hard. Work hard. <laughs> <laughs>just our silver jewelry making class and two minutes away we found an absolutely gorgeous restaurant and it's literally in the middle of the jungle. The architecture is super unique. Everything's built with natural materials so it blends in seamlessly with the environment and it's just incredibly peaceful and lovely. Oh, thank you. We ordered some traditional Indonesian food. We got some fried chicken with a mix of onion, chili, and garlic on top. Probably a bit spicy. Chicken satay, and we got the peanut sauce on the side that comes with it. Chicken lumpia, just a classic fried chicken spring roll. And soto ayam. It's a really rich looking chicken soup with noodle and other ingredients. So, I'm excited. Try a bite of this chicken with sambal. Sambal is that mix on top. Mm. Satay, the absolute Indonesian classic. Mm. The grilled chicken is delicious, but that sauce is really special. It's like a deep, rich, peanut butter with just a little bit of sweetness and other spices in it. Yum. Mm. <coughs> Ooh, that chili, <coughs> that chili really caught up with me. Indonesian food is surprisingly spicy by the way.
We're at Pereirinan Beach here in Tengu, and it's a really popular beach, especially at sunset. And at this time, both locals and tourists gather here, and it's very picturesque and beautiful. Every day at sunset, groups of local boys come here and fly kites together. And the kites are really enormous and together as a group, they assemble the kites and they fly the kites together. It's a really cool, just community thing that they do together. In the sky, it looks so itty bitty, but then you see it on the ground. And I think maybe 10 to 15 people could lie down on this thing and it takes five to six people to hold it together. Despite the explosion of tourism in recent years, the Balinese people maintain their unique identity and are deeply proud of their heritage. Their warm hospitality and genuine desire to share their way of life make Bali a truly remarkable destination. I encourage visitors to embrace the rich traditions that define Bali. In turn, You'll not only enrich your own journey, but also help to positively impact the local community.